Hello and what's up guys, Medium Guy here. Welcome to the next video in the video series dedicated to Caddy. So in this video, as you can see, we're going to jump into the basic ALF module that is built in in the Caddy. And we're going to actually implement basic authentication on different paths with different users. So without any delay, let's get down to work. So as you can see, I'm in the official documentations for the basic authentication directive. Right over here, you can see some explanation about how this directive works. And right over here, we have the syntax of how we can actually integrate it in our caddy file. So with having all this in mind, I'm going to move to the VS Code right over here. And as you can see, I've got some configuration files prepared already to demonstrate this directive in caddy. So actually, I'll put all these configuration files in my github repository for which you can find the relevant link down in the description section of this video so if you want to follow along you can actually clone this repo and have all these configuration files on your system so moving right over here you can see that i've got a docker compose file that actually has two services in it one being the backend which is an echo server that will actually echo the details of whatever request that it receives back to the client so moving next right over here you can see that I've got a caddy service and I'm using a recent version of the official image so we've got the restored policy so as a result the docker engine will actually try to restart this container by whatever reason that it gets stopped and over here on the environment variable section by passing the tz environment variable I'm actually able to define the time zone inside the container that will be created for this service so right over here on the port section I've got the port 80 and 443 that are mapped to exact same ports inside the container so as a result the caddy server that will be created inside the container will be actually accessible by the IP address of the host machine that actually has that container running in it and using these two exact ports and later configuring the caddy to listen to these two exact ports will be able to communicate from the outside network all the way down to the caddy server running inside that container so next right over here i've got the volume section that i'm mapping the caddy file to inside the container on this exact path in order to be able to actually initially configure the caddy server that will be running inside the container so lastly right over here i've got the dot slash data and dot slash config directory right next to my docker compose file mapped to the slash data and slash config inside the container so actually these are the two directories that the caddy will try to use in order to store its data and any configuration that it will be creating on the process so next i'll move to the caddy file right over here and you can see that on the global section i'm actually passing the automatic redirect from http to https to off and right over here i'm actually configuring the caddy to listen to exact same ports that i exposed on the docker compose file and right over here i've got a handle directive for slash api slash star and actually it is a simple reverse proxy to the backend service with this exact name which is exactly the same name that we gave to the echo server also in the docker compose file so the reason that the caddy server will be able to call the echo server through its docker compose name is because they will be actually created by the same docker compose file so in your use case if your caddy server and your upstream servers are on different networks or on different hosts you can simply pass the local dns name or directly your upstream servers ip addresses right over here so moving down you can see that by using the basic underline auth directive that we just saw in the official documentations and passing the slash api slash bob slash store i'm actually configuring a basic authentication on this exact path and actually by passing the username and password i'm actually defining the credentials that the users can pass to this exact path in order to be able to make requests to this exact path so down right over here i'm doing the exact same thing but for the alice user so as you can see the passwords are in a hash mode so i'll demonstrate how we can actually 
actually create these hashed passwords. So I'll move into the terminal and right over here, I'll hit ls to make sure I'm in the exact same path that I've got my configuration files and actually by passing the hd password command and providing it with my username and password I'll actually be able to create my hashed password for this exact user so actually hd password is an apache tool that you can install in your operating system of choice like for example for me that i'm using ubuntu you will be able to install it with this exact command the apache 2-utils package so i'll hit enter and because i have that already installed it won't actually install any new packages for me so again i'll try to provide this exact command and if i hit enter you can see that after the username colon it actually provides me with the exact same hashed password that I use in my caddy file so actually I've done the exact same for the Alice user with the exact same password to actually keep things simple in my demonstration so I'll try to say docker compose op dash d and by executing this command i expect my containers to be up and running as you can see it is complaining about the 443 port that is being used by another container so i'll just try to remove that container and come back in a moment so now that i removed the container that was using that port i'll be able to say docker compose op d again and as i expect my both containers have started so again by saying docker compose ps I'll be able to make sure that both my containers are up and running as we can see on the status column. Also, if I say docker compose logs dash f to follow the logs and dash dash tail 100 to grab the latest 100 lines of the output of these two containers and as i can see things are looking good and right now i should be able to make requests to this caddy server. So I'll move to the browser right over here. As you can see, if I make a request to the network address of the machine that is running my caddy server, I'll be able to actually receive some responses from that caddy server. So I'll try to go to the slash API slash Bob. And if I hit enter, it is asking for a username and password. So right now I can make sure that the basic authentication has been applied to this exact path. So I'll try to provide with some incorrect username and password. And if I hit enter, it won't be accepted by the caddy server and it'll still ask for the username and password. So I'll try to pass in the Alice credentials. Also, if I hit enter, it won't be accepted by the caddy server. But this time if I pass the correct credentials and you can see that the credentials have been accepted by the caddy server and the basic authentication is working as expected so as you can see i'm receiving some responses from the echo server that is proxied behind the caddy server also doing the same for the alice user and again the browser will try to ask for some credentials i'll provide with the alice username and password and if i hit enter you can see that again the credentials are being accepted by the caddy server and again i'm receiving the responses from the echo server that is proxied behind the caddy server so that's all for this video i hope you'll learn something new in this one if you have any questions any recommendations of course go ahead and ask me in the comment section down below if you haven't watched the previous videos i recommend you give a visit in which you can learn some other cool features in caddy from the basic concepts to the bot detection ip restriction forwarding authentication to an external service and things like that also you'll find the relevant link to the playlist down in the description section of this video so lastly if you found the video useful don't forget to give a like and subscribe to my channel to actually motivate me to create more free contents like this and with that i hope to see you in the next videos